we are fortunate today to be joined by Michael Arad, uh, Dartmouth class of 91 and architect of the September 11th Memorial, which as you can see and hear, uh, is still uh, being constructed. It will be done uh, just in time for the 10th anniversary of the attacks of September 11th. Many monuments, uh, many memorials are, you know, concrete, you know, literally and figuratively. Um, yet looking at this, sort of the defining characteristic, particularly in this context, is one of absence. Um, and so what we have here is the, is, is the absence of, of, of what once was. Could you talk a little bit more about that feeling of absence? I, uh, it's actually shortly after the attack that I started to sketch ideas for a memorial. And I was very, like almost every New Yorker, I was very affected by what I had seen that day, uh, witnessing the attack, and then seeing the way the city responded to it, and uh, which was incredible. It was uh, the care and compassion and determination that you saw here in New York were, were truly uh, moving. Um, I had been living in New York for close to three years, yet I still felt like somewhat of an outsider here in New York. And in an instant, practically, I became a New Yorker because of that attack. Having gone through the crucible of that experience, I felt a sense of kinship, a bond to my neighbors, to my friends, to people who were here in New York that up until then were uh, strangers, in effect. And I think in many ways what we've tried to build here is the uh, built equivalent of a moment of silence. And it's not a, a silence that's devoid of meaning. It's not an emptiness that's devoid of meaning. It's actually full of meaning. And what I was hoping to accomplish here was to create a site, a, a place where uh, visitors might come and have a moment of deep and meaningful uh, introspection. And what they bring with them to the site will greatly determine what they get from coming here. Um, and in a place like New York, there's always this urge to, to fill the place up, not to leave emptiness. So in many ways, being able to clear eight acres and set them aside and say that emptiness has, uh, has meaning, um, has value, uh, can be understood and be grappled with, was something that uh, was this point that we had to make again and again throughout this process. Can you talk a little bit about the about the water, about the waterfalls? I mean, you can't. You're here for you know. As soon as you approach here, you that's what you you immediately hear. What were you trying to What were you trying to capture with the waterfalls? For me personally, the water very much acted as a as a marker of time. Uh, it's slow, um, like the arm of a clock, uh, incessantly moving forward. Yet. Um, being unable to, to fill this void. When you came back to Dartmouth in 2004, you, yeah. you spoke at the convocation, and you said that, I think Dartmouth can be a catalyst for change in your lives, and I think that if you let it happen, you will find out that you really have no idea where you can go, which is actually a great thing. So, in, in light of, in light of uh, that profound statement, uh, I'm, I'm wondering if you could talk about how uh, you know, a Dartmouth uh, government major uh, wound up, uh, d you know, designing the, the memorial uh, for September 11th? I don't know how that happened. Uh, I think there are certain things which we can't predict, but um, one thing that I was thinking about when I said that was this notion of starting your education with a predetermined notion of what you're going to learn and what you're going to do thereafter and uh, I didn't know that and uh, the, um, this process of discovery uh, through my education at Dartmouth was actually quite uh, to me um, a process that started with some trepidation because I think we all look for certainty in our life and we want to know what we're going to be doing tomorrow and next year and 10 years from now. Um, but if you're open to this uh, 
uncertainty. You might find yourself doing something you never expected and that you might actually enjoy doing and be good at it. Um, and I think that there are some similarities between those four years I spent at Dartmouth and the eight years that I've spent working on this memorial design in the sense that uh, I couldn't have anticipated the process that this uh, project would take me through. And uh, I began this process very much with a, with a clear idea of what I wanted this memorial to be. Um, but I think to some degree I conflated the certainty that I had about the, the built elements of the design with ideas behind the design. And so what I've learned over these last eight years, which I think uh, is analogous to what I learned at Dartmouth, was to understand that there's a way to, to reach those ideas that you want to accomplish. And you have to hold on to those things dearly, um, but respond flexibly um, to some of these other parameters. After the eight years, are you happy with the, with the final product? I'm very, very happy with the, with the design that we have here. I feel that it's remarkably true to the vision that I outlined in 2003. And I realize now how fortunate I am to, that it did end up that way, because on a project like this, we could have detoured into a very different direction, and the tone and tenor of this memorial could have been very different than what it is today. I, did not, I wanted to create a memorial that that had a, a quiet and stoic defiance to it uh, that reflected on what I saw here in the city.